All right, we are so glad to have you here today for Kids Church. If you are here, please let us know in the comments below. If you've got your Bible, you can send us a picture of that. If you know your memory verse, send us a video of that. Oh. Everybody, please count down with us. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome to Kids Church Live. We are so glad that you are here today. And we are talking this month about being unstuck. Sometimes you might feel stuck in a situation, but don't give up because we need to have determination. That's a big word, but all it means is this, deciding it's worth to finish what you start. And it really is, boys and girls. That's what determination is. And that's what we need today, right now. Every yes. day, we need to be determined to finish what we start. Now, where do we get the strength to do that? God. God gives you what you need to keep going. That's right. It only comes from God. That's where our strength comes from, and we can rely on that strength to keep going. So remember that, boys and girls, at home, every day, rely on God, and he will give you the strength to keep going. And I want to give a special shout out to all the moms today. It's Mother's Day. And of any day, you guys need to know that God will give you what you need to keep going, moms. All the boys and girls out there, make sure you tell your mom that you love her. Give her a big hug and kiss. That's what she needs. That's going to help her keep going. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Happy Mother's Day. And Miss Sammy is also my wife. I'm Pastor Brian, and this is my wife, Miss Sammy. Hi. And she is a mom, so I want to give her a special Happy Mother's Day as well. Thank you very much. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go into our prayer time. Would you join me, boys and girls, in bowing your heads, closing your eyes? As we talk to God, that's what prayer is, it's talking to God. You know what? One of the things I really miss is having you guys pray with us. So I want you guys to pray at home right where you are. We're going to take a minute, and you guys can pray, and then I will finish up the prayer. Let's go ahead and go. God, I love you so much. Thank you, God, that even during this time, when we can't meet together in a church building, that your church is still alive and well. And wherever people are gathering together to meet, Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd be there with them, that they would feel your presence, Lord. God, help us today to worship you with all of our hearts. May we worship in spirit and truth. May we be true worshipers. We love you, God. Be with every single boy and girl. Help us to learn a lot. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, tell me, what time is it? It's game time! All right! Woo! Now, before we start our game time, we always have questions. If you know the answer, you can put it in the comments below. Now, the first question is for the girls. Last week, we learned that you should keep going even when it seems what? Here's your answers. A, partly cloudy. B, mostly sunny. C, raining cats and dogs. Or D, impossible. Now, all those could be true, but what did we say last week? Keep going even when it seems what? Put it in the comments below. All right, boys, here's your question. All right, so our memory verse for this whole month says, I press on to reach the end of the A face, B ace of base, C race, or D Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. <laughs> Gotta love that one. So which one is it? A, B, C, or D? Put it in the comments below. Now we've got a really cool game lined up for you guys today. This game, you guys are actually going to play at home. Now you're going to have to stand in the middle, the right or the left. You just listen to the instructions of the guy who's doing the video and then see if you stay in the game or if you're out. Let's right, go. Let's play. It's time to play the exploding fruit game. Everybody stand up and get ready to choose your favorite fruit. For cantaloupe, stand on the left side of the room. 
For watermelon, stand in the middle. For honeydew, stand on the right. Choose wisely, because if your fruit explodes, you're out of the game! If you chose watermelon, you are out. This time, we have a pineapple, a coconut, and a watermelon. You know what to do. If you chose the pineapple, then you're out. And for the last round, we have a coconut, a cantaloupe, and a pineapple. Good luck! If you chose the coconut, I'm afraid you're out. Thanks for playing with us. Bye-bye. All right. I love that game. Yeah, comment below. Let us know if you were still standing at the end or if one of the fruits got you out. That was a fun now game. Now we have breaking news. Whoa. Would you like to know who we have coming? Who's coming today? Let's take a look. Spidey! How cool is this? Welcome to Kids Church! Well, thank you for welcoming me to Kids Church. How are you guys all doing? We're doing great, especially hey, now man. that you're here. Can I give you five? Wow! Yeah! You Spider Man! Yes. Can you wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day? Well, hey, happy Mother's Day out there. And uh, since uh, Mr. Gene's not here, I'd like to do a special shout out to his wife on Mother's <laughs> Day for him. Happy Mother's Day, Miss Michelle. Woo hoo hoo! We're so glad you're here. Can you, like Emmett last week, can you stay the whole time, maybe do worship and stuff with us? Oh, I'll stay here and worship. I'll dance. I'll pray. Now, did you bring a friend with you? Yes, I'd like to introduce a friend. He's green. He's not slimy. And sometimes he gets a little angry. Let's invite my friend up here, the Hulk. Welcome, Hulk. How are you today? Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I think my arm is broken. Hulk oh, smash. no. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, Hulk has a special challenge for us today. What is that challenge? The 100 yards and 1 million subscribers. <gasps> Hulk wants us to get 100 likes or a million subscribers on our video today. So please like the video, share with friends, subscribe to make the Hulk happy so he doesn't get angry. You don't want to see him angry. Yeah, you know what? It's worship time. This is the time of the program where we get to praise God. I, I have a Spider-Man challenge out there for all the families out there. I know you kids like to dance, and I seen a couple parents the other day were dancing with the videos. And I like to challenge the families out there to get together and do the dance together as a family. And we'll pick the best family out there, and we'll put their video up, I like to say, next Sunday. Now, do you, is it any song or is there a song in particular you like? Uh, any one of the worship songs that we're doing this month. I'll, I'll do that. You know. All right, cool. So our first two songs are our memory verse songs. And the last one is a new favorite, You Won't Let Go. So please, entire families, get together, do a song for us, and send us a video of it. We want to see our video challenge to you families. Worship together as a team. Let's go into our worship time. Come on, guys. I press on to reach the end of the race And receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ 
Christ Jesus is calling us.
Spider-Man. Thank you, Hulk, for doing those songs with me. Awesome. <laughs> now, families, remember, send us in your video. I'm sure you guys are way better dancers than me. So please show us your video of you guys worshiping together. And now we're going to go into our four most important things. And we've got Miss Deborah on the line. Deborah, can you help us learn these four most important things? Oh, I see you're about to do the four most important things. I can help you with that. Okay, you ready? Let's start with number one. You know number one. You ready? I am a sinner. That's right. I'm a sinner and you're a sinner and oh no, oh no. I'm remembering something because I'm a sinner. It was, it was when I was a child. It's like this blast from the past. I need, I need my mask. Let's go. I remember now I was a child and oh it was the Saturday the Saturday before Mother's Day and I had just gotten back from the store and I was putting the bow on a very special present that I bought for my mom it's an angel and I used some of my allowance to pay for this and I was so excited I couldn't wait for tomorrow for Mother's Day but then I heard a knock on the door was Sally. Sally was a couple years older than me. She lived around the corner and she asked if my mom was home. No, she's not home right now. She says, would you mind giving your mom something from, from us, from our family, just to say Happy Mother's Day? Sure. Oh, okay. I'll give it to her. And then I see what she wanted to give. Oh my goodness. This is beautiful. And it's so much bigger than my little angel. I mean, look at this. My angel and this big angel. Oh my goodness. And it had pink. Again, my mom's favorite color with butterflies. I think my mom would love this so much more than what I was going to give her. I know what I'll do. I'll switch. I mean, they're both angels, right? That's not lying, is it? I gave her uh, on Mother's Day both the angels and... and she thought it was very nice. She loved both of them. I think she liked mine better. But the problem came about a couple days later. Sally came by. She said, oh, your angel looks so nice in the garden. And my mom said, yeah, that, that was from my daughter, Debbie. Well, Sally, she looked confused. Well, what do you mean? That, that was from, from me and my family. She said, no, you gave me the, the little crystal one. Oh boy, I knew I was gonna get in trouble. Oh mom, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I switched them because I, I didn't think you'd want the, the little one. I think you wanted the bigger one and I didn't have enough money to get that for you. She said, Debbie, it doesn't matter the size. It's just that you took the time and you got something special for me, something from your heart, but now you've lied about it and, and you've taken credit for something you didn't give? That's not right. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in you. Even years later, I, I think about that and I'm sad that I, I made that decision. And so, Pastor Brian, can you, can you just finish the, the rest of the four most important things? I think I need to listen and I think I need a little hope. I think we all need a little hope. So, you guys, let's just listen to the rest of the four most important things and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, thanks, Miss Deborah. I'm just surprised that she wants me to explain it because I think I'm just as bad as she is. I'm just as much a sinner, right? True, but you are our pastor, and I think you do know the four most important things pretty well. Can you explain them to us? Well, they start with what she said. Number one, I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, right? What's sin? Sin is when we break God's law. Oh, like when she lied. Like when she lied, yeah. That's a sin. And God doesn't like that. See, mm -hmm. God's not a liar. God always tells the truth. That's true. See, 
And then number two is because we lie and sin and do bad things, we don't deserve to go to heaven. I don't deserve to go to heaven, that's now, for sure. What that means is we can't be good enough ever to get to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So no matter how much good, good things we do, it's still we don't deserve to go it because of all the bad things we've done. So you can't make up for the bad things with the good things? It doesn't work like that. It's not like, like a that. scale, like if you do more good things, like it'll outweigh it kind of it thing? It does not work like that, boys and oh, girls. Oh, man. Your good works are dirty, filthy to God. That's what the Bible says. Ugh. Even your good works are not good to God. Because, because we kind of have selfish motives and stuff. Because even when we do good things, we're doing it from a sinful heart. That's right. So as sinners, even when we do good stuff, it's still not good. Not in God's eyes. Oh, so what can we do? That's it. That's the end of the program. We got no more good news. I thought there were four things. You only listed oh. two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number three. Most and important. And this is the most important of the four, right? Jesus died for me and for you and for sinners. Every single one. And because he died, we can go to heaven, not because of some good thing that we do, but because of what he did. Because he per lived the perfect life for us. Yeah. And he died taking the punishment for us. And only he could do that because he was perfect. Only God can save you and take you to heaven. And that's exactly what he did in Jesus Christ. That's that the good news. Heaven. That's the gospel. We can't save ourselves. We are sinful. That's terrible. That's bad. But the good thing is God is good. He alone can save us. And he has provided a way to be saved. So we've got, I am a sinner. I don't deserve to go to heaven. Jesus died for me. And here it is. Number four. I need to trust in Jesus. Yes. That's it. That's all you have to do. The Bible says that this is the work of God, that you believe in whom he sent. Trust his son. That's it. So doing good, being good, none of that. All you have to do is believe. And if you believe, listen to me, do you believe, boys and girls? If you believe, then you have eternal life. You are saved. You are going to heaven. And you can know that right now. That is so awesome. You know what, boys and girls, I can't wait to learn more about God and his word today. So we are going to go into our quiet seat time. Now, during this time, you all need to find a place to sit. You can be on the floor or a couch, wherever you want, but you need to find that place. Sit there, sit up really straight, and listen very carefully. Now, moms and dads, I want you guys to pay attention. And if they're doing a really good job, make sure you comment below and let us know because they will earn extra points for doing good during quiet seat time. So boys and girls, are you ready? If you are, sit up really straight. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey everybody, Haley here. Now, I don't want to burst my own bubble, <laughs> but today is gonna get sticky. <laughs> See? <laughs> I have always been amazed at people who can create art out of unexpected objects. So today, I've decided to give it a go myself. <laughs> and guess what my unexpected object is? <laughs> Ta-da! That's right, bubble gum. I've been working hard all morning getting it ready. Whew, I am sure glad I am done with that part. Well, here goes nothing. <sighs> oh, oh, wow, this is stickier than I expected. <laughs> I figure if I'm gonna be creating sculptures, I should start with one of the most famous monuments, the Arc de Triomphe in France. Oh, oui, oui, mademoiselle, le poisson, <laughs> le fromage. <laughs> I mean, really get into it. Right now it looks like a brain, but we'll get there. Sometimes situations in life can also turn out to be stickier than we expect. And when that happens, it's helpful to have determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, Jesus' disciples were determined to carry out the mission he had given them. But before they could begin, they were supposed to wait. Let's see what they were waiting for and what happened next. That's just never gonna be a hand. It never will. Enjoy the story. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Haley. Today we're learning God gives you what you need to keep going. Now, remember, boys and girls, 
Last week, we learned that we need to keep going even when it seems impossible. But how? How do we keep going? Well, here's how. God gives you what you need to keep going. There's no way we could keep going on our own. We're not the Energizer Bunny, right? We can't do it on our own. We have no strength on our own, right? But that's okay because that's all we have to do is tell God, God, we got nothing. I can't do this. And that's when God comes and gives us his strength by his Holy Spirit to keep going. All throughout the Bible, we have examples of God, the Holy Spirit, coming and giving strength to people in the Bible. One of the most famous examples, of course, is Samson, right? His strength came only from the Holy Spirit that gave him power, right? He was kind of like the Hulk in the Old Testament, right? Then there's this awesome story, and you could look this up, boys and girls, of a man named Elijah who outran an entire horse and chariot. Horse and chariots are really fast, and men don't normally run faster than them. But somehow, by God's Spirit, that man ran faster than a horse. All throughout the Bible, God gives us examples of how he gave us what we needed to keep going. And he will give you what you need as well. Now, let's go into our memory verse, and let's have Mr. Mark, who's on the line, help us understand today's memory verse. Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Mark. I'm glad to be back with you again. And all month, we're talking about determination. Determination is not giving up, going the distance. The Bible says we will have challenges in our lives, but with God's help, we can overcome them. Just remember, God gives you what you need to keep going. As you can see, I have this medal. I got it because I participated in a race. Running a race takes practice, just like anything in life. If you want to be good at something, you have to practice. You actually have to train to run a race. Our memory verse talks about a different kind of race. We find it in the book of Philippians in chapter 3, verse 14. And it says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. You see, our lives will be filled with obstacles. But remember, God gives you what you need to keep going. So press on. We have to train for the life here on earth. We have to train by reading God's word, by praying. And it's leading to the ultimate prize, which is being with God in heaven forever. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I sure like that better than this. That's a better prize. What do you think? So remember, you're going to face challenges, but God gives you what you need to keep going. That is so right. Thank you, Mr. Mark. It is so true that God gives you what you need to keep going. It actually happened to me this week. I was having a really hard day. I didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew. I didn't say I was having a hard day. I was just struggling inside. And at that very moment, I got something in the mail, a letter. I don't really ever get letters in the mail, so I was really surprised. I had to double check and say, yep, that's for me, Sammy. <laughs> and then when I opened it, I saw it was from a leader in Kids Church, Miss Jody. She had sent me a card. It said, thinking of you, and it was for Mother's Day, and it was so encouraging. And when I got this card, it just gave me that little boost that I needed to keep going. And sometimes God might do that for you. You might be having a hard day, and God might send someone your way to say something that will encourage you to keep going. Another way when nobody else is encouraging you is the Bible. Everything you need for this race of life, you can get from the Bible, and God will encourage you. And that's why I'm so excited about today's Bible lesson. We're learning from Acts chapter 2. So if you have your Bible, you can look, open it up. And let's watch this video and learn about how the disciples were waiting for something. Remember, Jesus had died, he had rose again, and then he had went up to heaven. And now they were supposed to go and tell everybody about Jesus in the whole world. Pretty scary, huh? But God was about to give them just what they needed to be able to do it. 
And the cool thing is, is the Holy Spirit wasn't just for them back in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is with every single person that's a Christian. And he will give you what you need to keep going. So watch this video based on Acts 2. One day, as Jesus and his disciples were sharing a meal, Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem because the Lord was going to give them an amazing gift, the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples that they would act as witnesses to the whole world about the great works he did while on earth. Then right before their eyes, Jesus rose up into the sky and was hidden from them in a cloud. Jesus ascended to heaven just as he had promised. As they stood there staring into the sky, two angels appeared. They asked the disciples, why are you looking at the sky? Jesus will return to the earth one day the same way he left. After witnessing Jesus ascend to his Father in heaven, the disciples began the day-long walk back to Jerusalem. They gathered together in the upstairs room of the place where they were staying. There, the disciples, the women, and Jesus' mother and brothers joined together in prayer on a regular basis. After Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, his close followers devoted their lives to prayer. On what seemed like a normal day, the group of Jesus' followers gathered as usual in the upper room to pray and fellowship, when a sound like a rush of mighty wind from heaven suddenly filled the entire house. As they tried to figure out what just happened, they looked at each other and saw what looked to be tongues of fire that settled on each person in the room. This was it. This was the gift Jesus promised would come the Holy Spirit. When they opened their mouths to praise God for this incredible gift, they began to speak in different languages, languages they had never spoken before. This was the power of the Holy Spirit. Jerusalem was packed with people who had traveled from many foreign lands for the festival of Pentecost. These foreign pilgrims began to overhear the disciples speaking foreign languages. A crowd of stunned and confused people gathered outside of the house where the disciples were staying. When the disciples spoke, the people in the crowd heard them speaking in their own foreign languages. How was this possible? Some people were amazed, wondering what this could mean. But others mocked the disciples and said they were drunk. Peter came out of the house and addressed the crowd of people, explaining how they were able to speak all these languages. He told the crowd that everything that was happening at that moment had been promised long ago in Scripture. Peter explained that Jesus, the man they had put to death, was God's Son, and He had risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. Peter said, Let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard Peter's message, it pierced their hearts. Filled with sorrow, grief, and regret, they were desperate to know what they could do to make things right between themselves and God and the Messiah they did not recognize and had rejected. People in the crowd cried out to Peter and the other disciples, What must we do to be saved? Peter shared the simple gospel message with them. Turn from sin, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter continued preaching to the crowd telling them that the promise of forgiveness of sins through repentance and baptism was for them, their children, and everyone who would believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Peter urged the people to save themselves and turn away from the path of the evil Jewish leaders. About 3,000 people who heard Peter's message that day believed and were baptized. 
They devoted themselves to the disciples' teaching about all the great works Jesus had done and his call for us to love each other. This group of new believers met to learn, fellowship, and pray together, just as we do today. This was the birth of the Christian church. That's right. God gives you what you need to keep going. I always was not Spider-Man. I love to fight crime. But God gave me the power. He sent that radioactive spider along to bite me, to give me the power I needed to fight crime. I never give up. Whether it's Sandman, the Hobgoblin, I never give up because I know God gives me everything I need to keep going. So we're going to go on and we're going to find out what happened with Haley. That's right. We're going to find out what happens with Haley with their gum sculpture. All right. John, I told you having the Holy Spirit would be so helpful. Well, yeah, Peter, I know so many different languages now. Hola, bonjour, salam. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I know you're excited, but please. Oh, hi. Um, I was just finishing my sculpting. Arc de Trump. <laughs> Wasn't today's story just awesome? I love how God's Holy Spirit gives us just what we need. He certainly gave the disciples what they needed. God has always had a plan to send a helper. In the Old Testament, people had to go to the temple in order to be near God's presence, and they weren't allowed to be directly next to him. But then, Jesus came on the scene. Yes! He made the way for us to have a direct relationship with God. And because of Jesus, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Once they received the Holy Spirit, the mission of Jesus began to happen. What the disciples could have never done on their own, they were able to do by the power of God's Spirit. And God knew that. He knew that we would need help, so he gave us the Spirit. We don't have to rely on ourselves. Whew. Talk about taking the pressure off. When you believe and put your faith in Jesus, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yay! I love gifts. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit doesn't just help us to accomplish impossible tasks. He is also there to help us and comfort us through difficult times in our lives. Maybe you know of someone who's gone through something tough, like having to move far away from friends, or having to get a tooth pulled at the dentist, which I might have to do after this. And maybe you heard that person say, I couldn't have done it without God's help. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to go through things alone. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. That's the one thing to remember today. God gives you what you need to keep going. So whatever's on your plate today, whether it's something hard or easy, or perhaps just a lot of chewed gum, that you're not sure what to do with. I hope you have an amazing day. See you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, wait, no. No, that's the wrong one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We're going to keep going because God is going to give us everything that we need, OK? Remember, boys and girls, there's God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, but don't forget, there's God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Let's not forget that the Holy Spirit is with us and gives us the strength and everything that we need to keep going. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to pray and ask God the Holy Spirit to be with us, to strengthen us, to keep going. We're not alone. All right. In fact, I like to invite my superhero friends to come on up, and maybe Spider-Man could pray with us, huh? All right. So you guys ready to pray? We bow our heads and close our eyes. You ready, Hulk? Yes. All right. So, dear Heavenly Father, I want you to lift up this lesson today of determination that you give us the strength to keep on going no matter what happens. I know we're we're stuck at home. And we get to spend quality time with our families. But we're never going to give up. We're never going to let this virus beat us. When it comes time to come back to church, we're going to be ready 100% to keep your word going. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. 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 Spider-Man and Hulk, thank you both so much for being here. We actually have another program on Wednesday called Superbook. Would you guys mind coming on Superbook and being a part of that too? What do you think, Hulk? Yes. Yes. Hulk says right yes. There. We'll be here on Wednesday. Okay, wait a minute. Would you guys like to find out who's going to be here next week? Who's going to be here next week? Let's find out, I'm going to give you guys some clues. All right? At home. Here's some clues. 
He's green like the Hulk and like slime. And a little cool fact about him, he actually, when he was a baby, was actually in this ooey-gooey slime that made him into the cool superhero he is today. Also, he loves pizza, and his favorite color is orange. Have you figured out who it is yet? If not, watch this video. Michelangelo, the wild one. Hey, I can see a pizza place from up here. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, it's going to be awesome. All right. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Don't forget to tune in next week. Subscribe to our page. And remember, Superbook on Wednesday nights. Talk to you guys later. See ya.